uh, welcome you to uh, as you participate with us in this uh, Thursday prayer and fasting uh, or prayer and worship night rather. Uh, kung nag-fast kayo, it's good also. But you know what? Uh, it's been a month already, right? One month na can you imagine since the quar- uh, community quarantine or ECQ, right? And uh, I know I-, I hope all of you are safe, sound, strong, uh, encouraged, and uh, strong in your faith. But I believe there are many people out there, many of our countrymen are not in the, the same state. You know, many of them are probably experiencing anxiety, fear, stress, stress about food. Iba sa inyo, stress eating nga eh. But stress about food, finances, about the future, about so many things. There's a lot of things that uh, come into play which we are not sure what's going to happen, right? And you probably wonder and probably people have asked you this question. Why does God allow such things? Why did God allow this COVID uh, pandemic to hit us? And not only us, but around the world, right? Well, tonight, hopefully, we get some insights through the Word of God to shed light on what should be our attitude, right? The proper attitude and the proper response to this health crisis and whatever crisis that comes our way. And so let me leave you uh, as we read through uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 9 and 16 to 17. Paul tells us, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Verse 16 tells us, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. You know what? If there's any one person who's been through a lot of stress, a lot of affliction, it's the Apostle Paul. You know, uh, he through his, throughout his uh, Christian life and his missionary journeys to preach the gospel, especially to the Gentiles, he's gone through a lot, tons and tons of stress and pressure. And let me read some of these as he describes it in 2 Corinthians 11 para makita lang natin ano yung pinagdaanan niya. Kasi inisip natin, wow, grabe yung pinagdaanan natin dito sa COVID. You know, hindi tayo makalabas, hindi natin magamit yung sasakyan natin hindi namin natin ma-display yung mga bag nyo or yung mga damit nyo or whatever. But look at what Paul had to go through. Uh, it says, sabi niya, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times, yung stone, hindi siya sabog, no? Stone, parang binabato siya. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. Can you imagine? Yun yung pinagdaanan ni Paul. Makes you wonder kung, uh, kung ano yung in-stress natin dito sa COVID crisis natin. Because hindi tayo makalabas, hindi tayo makapunta sa mall. We cannot meet. You know what? Talk about the, the stress. If there's one person who undergo, has undergone this, it's Paul. Yet, you know what? In the middle in the midst of all of these, he was able to overcome. In fact, he nagsulat nito eh. You chapter 4, chapter 11, shalom. This is a letter that he wrote to the Corinthian church. And so, if there's a, a guy who overcame uh, and persevered all throughout all these afflictions that, that have come and challenges that came, come, came his way, it's Paul. And I believe all of us are overcomers. Okay? Sabihin mo, Sa sarili mo. Or kung may katabi ka, sabihin mo sa katabi mo, you are an overcomer. Okay? Lahat tayo, if we are in Christ, we are overcomers. And that's why this passage actually gives us the right vantage point, the right perspective about how to view this COVID or this health crisis. Uh, ang tamang vantage point plus anong tamang action point natin as we go through this pandemic. And what are those that Paul enumerates or leads us to a revelation on how he was able to go through this and overcome. First, 
he declared that all of us are clay pots. We are all clay pots. Look at verse 7. Sabi niya, but we have this treasure in jars of clay. Now, the Bible says we are those jars of clay or earthen vessels. Sa Tagalog, tayo daw ay mga paso or mga palayok. Right? Palayok daw tayo or paso. Uh, you know, growing up, pag nandun ka sa children's party, you know, merong isang, uh, merong isang parlor game na nilalalo, right? Yung hit the pot, yung palayok, di ba? This pot is filled with, uh, you know, candies, uh, money, coins, and all of that. And someone is blindfolded and you get a stick. And if you are able to hit the pot and break it, all those goodies, all those money are yours. Of course, magrarambol lahat ng mga bata, no? Okay, minsan sa hopefully wala nang naka, nagkasakitan. Uh, I don't know if you gone through that, but yun yun, 'di ba? Merong palayok. There is an earthen vessel filled with all kinds of goodies. Now, the Bible says parang ganun daw tayo. We are like those palayok and we contain something inside, something more important, something more valuable, valuable rather than candies and money. And you know what that is? Paul reveals that we have a priceless treasure inside of us. Eh, anong treasure na to? Okay? And it actually tells us this treasure because we are clay pots, but we contain God's power. We contain God's power. You know, it says there, to show us that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Grabe, I like that statement. That this we have a treasure which is the all-surpassing power of God. You know, today we're facing a problem much bigger than ourselves. Much bigger than our nation. Hindi masusod. Okay? If you, sometimes if you listen to our president, diba, sometimes very cynical na siya na hindi niya na masol. Because it's much, much bigger than himself. It's much bigger than our nation. In fact, all the first world nations, they cannot even solve this. Okay? They're racing for time for a vaccine. If there's something, if there's a condition, a challenge, an obstacle bigger than us, then we need a power that is more than ourselves, greater than ourselves. That is what this term, all surpassing power, is talking about. We need a power greater than ourselves, greater than the people out there, greater than the greatest minds, the most powerful people here on earth. We need God's power in this situation and, and every situation that comes our way. And listen, Paul says that this power is from God, not from us. Kay Lord ito galing. It is a treasure because all surpassing means something beyond us, something extraordinary, something that is beyond measure. Hindi daw natin masukat because this is infinite, eternal, limitless, divine, heavenly power na hindi ang source here on earth. In fact, a description ni Paul dito in another epistle in the book of Ephesians, he describes it as the resurrection power. The resurrection power of Christ. Sabi niya, the power that is inside of us is like the working of His mighty strength, which He exerted in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly realms. Think about it. Diba kaka-celebrate lang natin ang Easter? Someone who died is resurrected. Someone who wala nang talaga pag-asa. They say that in death, okay, there is no more hope. Tapos na lahat. Everything is a dead end in death. But you know what? Through Jesus Christ, this resurrection power is available to us, everyone who believes, through the Holy Spirit. This resurrection power is like exerting that mighty strength. Yung power daw na binigay, okay, to raise Jesus from the dead is available for you and for me for whatever crisis comes your way. Whether it's this health crisis, a uh, you know financial crisis, Lord, uh, or whatever it is, a relational crisis, whatever crisis, you know what? We have this resurrection power to go through all the pressures that this earth can bring, because we have this divine, heavenly 
power. It allows us to go through this life as overcomers. Overcomers. We can overcome even this challenge that is facing us. You know, Paul describes how he's able to go through the crisis that he faced in verses 8 to 9. He says, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Think about it. He coped up with all this mounting pressure by relying on all the all-surpassing power of God within him. And we must do the same. Kahit na, kahit na persecuted daw siya, he was not in despair. Kahit he, people were trying to you know, press him on every side, he's not crushed. Hindi siya nadudurog. He may be struck down, beaten, but he was not destroyed. Because there's something inside of him that's all powerful that kept him afloat that kept him in faith, that kept him full of faith, full of God's love. Let me illustrate it this way. You know, di ba kailangan meron tayong laman? If our lives don't contain Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, or, you know what, the power of God, our lives are easily crushed with all the pressures that come our way. Parang itong lata ng coke. Okay, think about this, right? Look what I will do to this. Yeah. Okay, this is a testimony, a tribute, not to my strength, although may muscle tayo ng konte, but you know why? Because walang laman to. This is empty. It does not contain anything. This, on the other hand, I will try to crush it. Okay, try to squeeze it. Okay? Hindi nyo makita, pwede kong apakan. Pero wala nangyayari. Hindi siya nakakrush. You know why? What's the difference? One is filled. One is empty. Paul says that there's something inside of us that God has given. A treasure. A treasure which allowed him to overcome. Yung pressure inside of him. Yung power inside Paul was greater than the power being exerted to crush him. That's why he was not destroyed. That's why he was not in despair. That's why he, he was not abandoned. Let me tell you, if you feel you're being crushed in Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, God wants to resurrect okay, those dreams, those faith, those hope that's being crushed right now. You're not abandoned. You are not alone. Jesus Christ is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. Amen? Let me tell you. This pandemic, this health crisis, this too shall pass one day. But it's how we respond to this that will help make or break us. Remember, we are those earthen vessels and we contain a great treasure, the power of God inside of us. And the reason for that is so that all of us can persevere. We can persevere. Sabi niya, therefore, do not lose heart. Let me tell you, church, do not lose heart. Every one of you who are listening tonight, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Now, why do these pressures come? Why do challenges come? Why did this pandemic come to us? There are many reasons. But I believe one reason that we can point to as we have studied this word tonight, you know that reason? Is to break our earthen vessels, to break these earthen vessels so that the heavenly treasure, treasure rather, will come out the power of God. Think of it as yung palayok, di ba? Hit the pot. Tayo yung palayok. And God broke it so that the treasure will spill out so that many can partake of the power of God. But you, you know what? There's another power that God has given us. 
And you know that what pa- that power is? It's called the gospel power. The gospel power. Romans chapter si- uh, 1 verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to anyone who believes. Gospel power is something that God has given us. It's a treasure that we we do not need to keep to ourselves. We need to distribute it to others. That's why Paul's exhortation and my exhortation for all of us, do not lose heart. Persevere. You know why? Because God is renewing us day by day. Sabi ni Paul, when all this pressure come, yes, our bodies may be wasting away. This physical life may be wasting away. But something inside is being renewed, being prepared to have an eternal glory that far outweighs all the pressure, all the stress, all the challenges that is coming your way and that will come your way. The gospel is transforming us day by day as we align our lives to his will. Amen? He's renewing us. He's renewing our mind, our perspective. He's renewing our soul, conforming us to Jesus Christ. Going back to my initial question, what is God doing during this pandemic? He is breaking us. Just like Christ's body was broken and giving to many, so too are we, like jars of clay, being broken so that the treasure inside of us, God's power and God's gospel can be shared to the people all around us. Let me leave this truth with you before we pray. When challenges are severe, we can persevere by the power of God and by the gospel of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, truly, you're doing something. We may not like it. Lord, it's not easy to be broken, Lord God. But even as one song declared, blessed are the broken. Even as you were broken to be distributed, to, be, to bless many, Lord. Father, let this life, let this soul be broken, Lord God, so that the treasure inside, Father, your power and your, glo- and your gospel may be seen, may be experienced, not just by us, but by the people around us. Lord, use us, especially during this time, to be those conduits of blessing. And if you are here tonight and you don't, you don't have an assurance, you don't have hope, I believe it all begins. The resurrection power, the resurrection can be yours. But first, there must be death. That's the power of the cross. First, there was death. And then there was life again, eternal life. Jesus came okay, to die for, you, for us. And he was raised so that he can give us eternal life. And tonight, before we pray, let me invite uh, those of you who are listening. If you are here tonight and you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, well, tonight he's offering the gospel. That is God's power unto salvation if you have not given your life to the lord jesus christ you can pray this prayer with me please uh, go along and pray this to jesus christ not to me but to jesus christ lord jesus i realize that you know as i lived my life i've been living by myself for myself relying on my own power but tonight i surrender and i turn to you And I put my entire dependence on you and what you have done for me on the cross. I realized that you died on the cross. Your death paved the way for me experiencing eternal life. And so, Lord, tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior, my Master and my Forgiver, in Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you who prayed, You can contact us or we want to contact and help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ.